Hi folks, welcome back to Fantasy World Dizzy. Let's quickly introduce ourselves to the interface, shall we? The green oval looking thing in the middle of the screen, that's our hero, Dizzy. Like Seymour, his moveset is limited to walking and jumping. If we push fire, we can open up the inventory, which allows us to view and use our items. The first two Dizzy games only let you hold one item at a time, this one lets you hold two. It's a step in the right direction, because the other games let you hold three, but it's still kind of problematic, at least to begin with. Now at this point I have to mention two things before we go ahead. What you see here is only a third of what is being displayed on my CPC's monitor. The game has a huge border that does nothing but cut down the size of the screen that gets used, and it kind of makes things really difficult to see, and it makes it a real pain when it comes to you know, processing the video and compressing it, so I've cropped what area I'm recording just to make the text easier to read. Second, I'm going to be playing with an infinite life poke. This game is brutal and unforgiving, it does its absolute best to kill you before you can complete it, and uh, we're not going to let it. We're playing to win. To make up for my flagrant cheating, I'm going to be showing off pretty much all of the traps that the game threw in to get you. After a short while, you'll see why you need the help. It'll be like America's Funniest Home Videos. Except you die. And, um, well that's about all there is to know about the game. So, let's begin. In the next video. So until next time, goodbye. <laughs> nah, just kidding. We're going to do this thing now. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice that we have an apple in our inventory. What we're going to do is we're going to give it to our troll friend over here, see if we can bribe him into letting us out. Or, at the very least, leaving us alone come shower time. There you have it folks, you've got two items at your disposal, and if you don't have the brains to work out that you need to use the water on the fire, the game tells you to do it. Let's press on. This screen, well in the Amiga version of this screen, there was a series of hidden platforms over here to the left that would take you to find some hidden stuff, mostly to gather some points. There's no such thing in this cut down version however. Also, this room has an item in it, which is a little bit unfair, because usually the items in this game, they're either a different colour to their surroundings, or they have a great big hitbox around them. This one, however, does not. It's an unfortunate design choice perhaps, but not like it's the worst in the game, so let's just pick up the rock, and get going. Up and to the right, you will have seen the rat patrolling the hallways. Uh, rats are a sort of a staple recurring enemy of the Dizzy games, and they pretty much always kill you in one hit. In this case, we need to defeat the rat by getting in its way, dropping the loaf of bread, and then getting out of its way. The rat will eat the loaf of bread, and scurry off. Now, dick move alert! The rat moves slower than you do, so if you walk after it, it'll go straight for your neck, and you'll die, even though you've just subdued it with food. Give it a bit of distance, you'll be fine, however. There's a gap in the ceiling, and we can jump through it to the main entrance of the castle proper. If you look at the top of the stairs, you can see some pixel art. This is actually the title screen to Dizzy 2, and I hope it shows up in the final video. Uh, if not, trust me, it's there. We're going to go ahead and explore the castle now, so let's set the boulder down, because we're going to be grabbing some stuff on the way, and uh, see what we can find. To the left, we find a switch. When pulled, it will break. This is another recurring element of the Dizzy games. They're usually put in to create some kind of moving platform or what have you. Something to make the game far more difficult than it should be. We'll come to the portcullis later on, but for now, let's continue. Let's fall down to the wrong screen. <laughs> you know, this isn't actually the pixel-perfect jump. This screen, the Banquet Hall, this is the screen with the pixel-perfect jump. Thankfully there aren't many pixel-perfect jumps in the game, so you won't see me make a fool of myself like that too many times. ROM hackers, take note. Also on this screen, we can see this guy over here. This is one of the Yoke folk. 
If we try to talk to him at the moment, he'll ignore us. So what we're going to do is we're going to press on over here to the left. And we'll talk to that guy soon. Now we're at the top of the stairs. We're going to press on to the right. And fall in a pit onto some daggers and die. See what I mean? This game is horrible. This time, we'll jump to the right. Get ourselves a shiny gold key. And head back to the left. Next, we're going to make our way up the stairs. This will lead us to... The Attic. You know, I'm fairly sure castles don't have attics. What kind of a place is this, you may be wondering. Eh, it's probably some kind of hunting lodge for rich weirdos. Regardless, there is a bone here. We'll be taking that too. Last stop for this video is a door which... It's not hidden, but at the same time it's not immediately apparent. Over to the left here, we are told to knock and enter. Which is easier said than done when you're wearing boxing gloves. We'll come to this door later in the Let's Play, but for now, let's head back downstairs and dump our inventory. There's a few more bits and pieces that we can collect you know, in, in the upper part of the castle, and we really need the free uh, inventory slots. Don't worry though, we'll come to using this stuff pretty soon. So, with our infantry dumped, we're going to call it a video. Tune in next time when we'll do some more stuff. So until next time, goodbye.